Nice intro. Oh, it's an advert. For a bunch of text adventures. Here's one of them. The Quest for Kron. Nice little atmospheric graphics, but I had some problems wrangling with the parser, and the prose is a bit purple. Bonus points for allowing to kill yourself horribly on the first move, though. Right, I'm going to zoom through things fairly quickly here, because it's a double tape month, and there's loads to cover. On the PD front, Vioris is an entirely competent Tetris clone. Good two-player mode, nice starfield background. Has non-standard one-by-one pieces if you're a Tetris purist who cares about that kind of thing. Lunar Lander is an entirely competent um, Lunar Lander clone. And Blocky is an entirely competent Columns clone. Except, no it isn't. It's clearly unfinished. You can never actually get a game over condition. And if you look closely, the score is jammed to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 throughout. Oops. On the shoot 'em up construction kit front, Psy Force 1 is a fairly standard effort with a death animation that always makes me laugh as you turn into some kind of sad Buzz Lightyear. There is also, get this, Grod the Demented Pixie and his friends. Oh my. Nebulous, aka Tower Toppler in the States, I believe. Another Houston game, another one that turned up on that C64 in a joystick thing from a while back. It's fondly remembered, but I was never quite on board with it. The most problematic part is how much of it is random chance. Some of these platforms will just vanish underneath you. You have to know this by heart, which ones will just plunge you to your death. Also problematic is occasionally you have to take elevators up without being able to see where the enemies are above you, therefore it's pretty much complete chance whether you get past them or not. Very nice rotation effect, though, and quite pleasingly surreal. Just hop over that uh, disappearing platform there. And tower complete! Your reward, some fish. I, Alien, is a very strange platformer where you wander around as some kind of blobby, bug-eyed, big-footed alien trying to defuse a series of bombs or something. Unfortunately, I kept falling down inescapable pits so I couldn't be bothered making a decent fist of it. Sorry. Bonus points for apparently humans are the bad guys in this. Oh god, game over. And what a waste of some great Martin Galway music this is. It's horrible. You have the most awkward floaty jumps with no air control I've ever played, and I've played Dizzy games. The most interesting thing about this is the original adverts and box art caused quite a bit of stir over here, as it was some kind of sci-fi cheesecake art originally from Heavy Metal magazine and it contained almost 25% of a visible nipple. This caused some panicked censoring by painting on even more silly clothes, or more lazily, just splatting screenshots over the offending nips. Nice hats, guys.
But never mind all that. This is the big one. This is what can reasonably be claimed to be the last hurrah of the C64. This is Mayhem in Monsterland by Apex Computer Productions. And that's a very sinister noise. Yes, technically this is one of the best games ever produced for the C64. We are Mayhem, the little dinosaur here. We live in a world that has been made sad. We have to make it happy. We do this by collecting bags of magic dust and bringing them to, brace yourselves, Theosaurus. was always a bit surprised by the sad version of the level, at least in a demo. It doesn't really make sense to start in this sort of drab area, deliberately drab, rather than the happy area, which we'll come to soon, and shows off the technical wizardry much better. In fact, let's skip straight to Theo. Wait for it. Now you're talking. Now this is much prettier. First things first, kill this guy. Pick this up. What does this do? I'll show it off in a second. It's the charge icon allowing you to zoom around these levels very quickly. In the happy portion of the game we have to collect a certain number of stars. You don't need to collect all of them, you get a bonus if you do. Nuts. Yes, this uses a system in common with creatures where you have one hit per life. Anything else, you're dead. Trying to remember how to get these stars. There we go. What was that? That is a score multiplier. Note the dynamic music as well. You sort of wobble your way under there. That is a checkpoint. I'm not sure how well this is going to encode on YouTube, or by the umpteen mangling steps it will take for me to get this to YouTube. There's a lot of wizardry going on with things like alternating colours per frame in order to try and give the illusion of more colours. I've not turned on any of the PAL, PAL emulation options in Vice that will possibly make this a bit easier to see. And here's one of the problems. There's There's been a bit of a backlash and counter-backlash, although that's putting things a bit strongly, about whether Mayhem in Monsterland was actually any good. And I will admit to be getting quite frustrated in parts in this. It does suffer from the Sonic problem, in that a large part of the game is knowing when to not go fast. Because if you don't know the level layout, you will quite happily career into bottomless pits and die horribly. Couple that with some slightly awkward checkpointing. This is a cut down level of the full games level. I've never actually played that. So I'm not sure whether it got fixed up a bit. Ah, 
Another slightly annoying thing is the enemies respawn slightly too quickly as soon as they're off the screen. They can make things a bit awkward. Oh god, these fish. It took me ages to figure out how you're actually meant to get past them. You can't jump on them. If you charge into them, you bounce off them. The main bugbear I had with this specific level is all of the greenery that you actually hide behind. It's a nice showing off of the C64's sprite priority rules, but it was a bit of a pain not being able to see where I am. Also a pain is just jumping into a big hole when you have to grab that last big star in order to get the quota. Let's try that again. hidden bounce pad under there. Nice to see the trees have cheered up though. Let's try that again. No? Careful now. I don't really want to get the checkpoint that's on the right here, because otherwise I'll have to navigate the fish again to get to the exit point of the level. How best to attack this. Now if I just time this horribly wrongly... Never mind, I've got my quota now. I can speed to the right here one more time. And demo complete.